Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart. How is everyone today? Happy Tuesday. Happy um, end of March. I guess that would be uh, tomorrow, last day of March. Um, we are finishing up our, let me show you what I'm doing, our series. Our root vegetable series that we did for the month of March. Because now um, we're going to get into spring. People are going to be planting gardens. Um, it's that time of year. And we're all set. So we did our carrots. We did our turnips. And we did our beet. And tonight I'm doing some scallions. So let me get a little water on my brush. And I will start painting. I'm loading my brush up with all white. And then I'm just picking up a little bit of the burnt umber on the end. I'm going to just sketch in a few little bulbs of the scallions, how they grow under the ground. They don't all have to be the same size. They're certainly not going to be the same size when I start painting them. But I just want a little bit of placement of where to put them. So I've double loaded my, well, I've kind of just like loaded it with white and then side loaded a little bit of the burnt umber onto the side. And this is probably, this is a fancy brush, this is one of my unicorn handle brushes, but it's probably, I would say this is the equivalent of a number eight. So I'm coming down and you know, I'm going to start my vegetables with the root part first and then... I will do the above ground leaf part. So I'm gonna pick up a lot more white. I'm not going to add more burnt umber this time. So I'll see if I have enough in there. I might have lost it a little bit. I could always go back in and shade because I think my middle one might be a little too dark. So I'm gonna come back over that with some white again. Yeah, that's better. I like that much better. So I'm going to fill it in with some white in the middle here. And again, I'm just going to pick up white. I'm not going back into the burnt umber. And I'm going to do this third one. It's just got a tiny bit of shading to the outside. And bring it up. Now you see when I use my brush, when I do these strokes, the one you can see in the middle the best. Because let's see, is this going to help? No. Um, this one you can see the best because it had the most brown. But when I do my stroke... I hold my brush flat, I come down, and I keep my brush the same way. My brush stays the same way with the same side to the outside, and up I come, and then I do the same thing here. I put my brush flat, I do some pressure, I keep the one edge of my brush to the same side as I come down, I follow my sketch, and I go up in a circle and the same thing here because I'm going to add a little bit more white to this so I'm coming down turning and going up okay I don't know why I have that weird glare tonight so it doesn't help that one second that I'm doing um, white on the beige it doesn't really stand out, but we'll manage. You'll see when I do my leaves. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the burnt umber because I want a little bit tiny more, just a little bit. Burnt umber and black go a long way. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just adding a tiny bit, tiny bit of shading to the down root part outside edges of my scallions. You guys may know these as green onions. They grow pretty wild here. It's almost a weed. You can tell when you cut the grass um, that you've probably mowed down quite a crop of scallions because it, the lawn, instead of smelling like um, cut grass, it smells like onion. Okay, clean my brush. Now I'm going to let those dry and I'm going to um, work on the green part, the stems. So 
And I also have a little treat for you guys tonight. I'm going to add a little something extra. I told you guys about it last week. But tonight I'm going to add a little something extra to this one. So you guys will get to see that. I think this one. Yeah, probably this one. Um, so you guys can get to see that too. So I am putting out a little bit of soft apple. And is this thicket? Thicket. Yep, thicket. So I'm going to use the same brush. I want to make sure I dry it in my paper towel. And I'm going to um, double load with my soft apple and my thicket. Get a nice amount up into my hairs of my brush. You always want to keep the light to the same side and the dark to the same side. If your colors do end up getting a little muddy, you just want to either um, wash it and start, wash your brush, rinse your brush off and start over. Or it's possible that you can just take your brush. If you dip in um, wrong once or twice, you just take your brush, wipe off the excess paint, and then make a new runway. And that's it. Easy peasy. So, I'm going to start with one in the middle. And you've seen scallions or green onions in the store. They are very long and tapered, and they're almost hollow. Well, they are hollow on the inside. And pretty tall leaves. We're going to be overlapping them and making them, um, you'll see. A little skinnier up top and maybe one got a little crooked or bent in the wind so we'll pull that one down a little bit then we'll add another little skinny one up this way and there we did the leaves for our one scallion. And I'm getting a little um, gloppy with my paint, so I just wipe it off. And I'm going to go back in and double load again. There, how's that? I think that'll work. So, the thicket and the soft apple on one side. So, how's everybody? Is your weather really good? Our weather has been awesome here. So I think spring is in the air. Spring is certainly going to be in the air here at Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art because we will be getting ready for our spring products. You'll start seeing me highlighting some of them on the page. I will be um, having an event towards the end of the month, so watch for me to post that date. You guys can see what I'm having. New stuff that I've created I'm coming up with for spring. I love coming up with new designs. I love even taking the same, my designs that I've made in the past and incorporating new colors or in the case of my signs, making new sayings for some of the same signs. But I will also um, get inspiration from Pinterest because there are very, 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 very many talented people out there creating and painting. So what do you guys think of my scallions? Oh, I think I'm good. Maybe I'll add one more leaf in here. I don't know. Are they called leaves? I don't know if they're called leaves, if they're called greens. I know on beets and the turnips and stuff, they're called greens. But these are just part of the onion, right? So I don't know. I mean, certainly the part you eat both parts of a scallion. We eat both parts of all these too. I just don't know what they're called. Do you know what the top part of the scallion is called? Is it just called scallion? Let me know. Okay. I'm going to get a liner brush. And I'm going to get a little bit of water on my liner brush. Because when we use our liner brush and we want to make these little tiny root hairs, fibers... You want your paint to be a little thin. So I just dip the tip of my brush in water and I pick up some water. 
and roll it around in here and get some thin paint going. Okay. And now I'm just going to put some little curly root parts at the bottom of our scallions. This is definitely the part you would cut off when you clean them and chop them for soup or whatever you're making, pasta. Once in a while, I'll go back in, and even though I'm using the same color paint, it has different shades to it because when I pick it up, it has less water after I've used my brush for a few strokes, and it looks a little darker. <laughs> So you want these curly cues, some longer, some shorter. Of course, they're going to cross over each other. Some are darker, some are lighter. So, there you go. Now I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to show you guys, you guys have seen me do this before. I'm going to put out some of this floating medium and show you how I shade. Okay, just need a drop of that. Um, let me see, do we have any comments? You guys, you know, if you have any comments, what is this? Mm. Okay. You guys know I will be back to, um, if I don't see your comments now, if you have any questions, I always come back and respond and answer all your guys' questions. So I put out a little bit of that floating medium. I'm going to load my brush with the floating medium. And then I'm just going to go in here with my burnt umber and get a little bit of it on the side of my brush. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do the soil line. I'm gonna pull it right across where the top of my scallion meets the dirt. And obviously I want it to be, have a little bit of a unevenness to it because it is the top of the garden. And the reason I put the floating medium on it is because down here where I painted this part, I don't want to get paint on that, but I do want my brown line up here. So that's the only part where we have paint coming off because the rest of it has the floating medium. And there we go. So I'm going to show you my bonus in a minute. So now we have our scallions and this is the last part of our series. So we did the beets, the turnips, and the carrots. What do you guys think? Which one was your favorite? I don't know, because I, I was kind of leery about doing the onions because they're white and I didn't think they'd stand out, but I like the way they came, so I don't know. I think, honestly, the turnips are my favorite, but I am partial to carrots. I don't know, I can't pick, you guys pick. Put in the comments which one is your favorite, okay? And I showed you I have these all when I did the background. I did them all in line so they can be posted in a series or hung on the wall or whatever. I like these boards too. These boards will fit in a frame. So if I were to get five by seven frames, even though they're thick and they're canvas boards, they pop right into a frame. So there we go. We have our whole series and they're lined up and they all match. But I am going to go back now. I think I'm going to do my um, bonus on here. I'm not going to do it on my stallions. I'm going to do it on my turnips. Okay, so I'm getting a little yellow paint out. Who knows what I'm going to do for the bonus with some yellow paint? Hmm? If we don't need that much, I'm going to use, I don't know, I need a different brush. I want a different size brush. I feel like Goldilocks because this one's too big and this one's too small. 
So I have to find one that's just right. This one maybe? And number 10, yes. So, here we go. Goldilocks picked her brush. All right. So, I'm loading the whole thing with this really, you know what? I'm going to add some white to it. Otherwise, my yellow is going to be pretty translucent. Yellow, um, red, some oranges are pretty translucent. So, I could either do two or three coats or I can add some white to part of my yellow right here. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> and then this is the first start of it. I'm doing a bumblebee. The first part of it is basically just a one stroke leaf. You put your brush on an angle, you push down, you put some pressure and you pull up to a point and that's it. That is it. There is the body of our bumblebee. A little black. A little bit of black. Okay. Now I'm going to get the back of my brush. I'll use this one. I'm going to dip it in my black. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put the bumblebee's head on. That's it. Just that part I don't know why you guys I'm not seeing comments tonight so sorry if you're commenting I definitely will come back I'm gonna get my liner brush again once in my black and I want to have a little bit of water in my black I want my black to be a little inky so I'm going to pick up some water with my brush and then pull out some of the black paint and make a little puddle over here where my Black paint is a little inky and a little more thin than what came out of the bottle. Okay? So I can do my antenna. So I'll do one and a dot and two. Okay? Um, then I want to pick up some more of this inky black paint. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to start adding... The little stripes, you guys might have seen me do this before. I'm going to add the little one stroke at a time stripes for my bumblebee. I'm going to make them a little bit higher in the middle than on the end because I want to give the illusion of our bumblebee having a curve to it. Too much water in my brush. Sorry, guys. So if I make, let me do, let me just dab this up a little bit. See that? Comes right up. All I did was fold into a really strong corner the edge of my paper towel and it sucked up the water that I didn't want there. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna fix this antenna with a dot. I'm gonna go back in and add my lines. So anyway, each little liner stroke is separate. And you pull down, you want them higher in the middle and lower towards the ends. Gives the illusion of your B having like a little bit of a round shape to it. Gives it a little bit of dimension, we like to say. And there we got the back part and the stinger. I'm gonna go back to the brush I had, my Gold Deluxe brush that was just right before. And once again, I'm gonna load the whole thing with white. Get a lot of nice white paint in there. A lot of side loading tonight. So we did side loading for the bottom part of our scallion. We did side loading where we loaded our brush with the um, floating medium and a little bit of the burnt umber to do our dirt line. And now I'm doing side loading for my wings. So I filled my brush, white paint, nice amount of fresh white paint on there. And I'm just going to go in here and gently get a little bit of black loaded onto the side of my brush. You don't want a lot. 
because the we the wings are kind of translucent. So I'm gonna go out, push down, turn, and come back in. And see how they look translucent, but they just have that little shadow to the outside of them from the tiny bit of black. I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna push out, turn, keeping the black to the outside, and come back in and meet where I started. I'm gonna do the other side. Pick up nice fresh white again. Side load a little bit of black on there, not too much. And then I'm gonna do this side. Stand up my brush, push down, curve around, and come back in. And the same thing, this time I don't think I'm gonna need to pick up more black. But I'm gonna just push down and back. So there, I added a little bumblebee to the top of my turnips. So if I wanted to put this all out in one series, let's do that. I'm gonna pick up a little black again. So I'm laying them out so they're nice and even. And obviously I would split the dark ones like I did. I wouldn't put these two together. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this black paint on my liner brush. And I'm going to go in And I'm going to just make my bumblebee trail. So this way when I wanted to hang them or put them up together, they would all line up. It doesn't matter, some of your dashes are longer, some of them are smaller. You keep a pretty good straight line. And that's it. So there we have it. So what do you guys think? Good. So let me turn you guys around again. So there we go. I did my bumblebee on my turnip and had my little bumblebee trail follow off and lined it up just so. So it continue on to the next um, board. And that is it. So, thank you guys for joining me. Like I said, I will definitely come back and check the comments. Couldn't see them tonight. I apologize. Um, turn off that. Okay. And Thursday is April. Yep, Thursday is April. April Fool's Day. Um, Thursday, we're starting with our new spring stuff. You're going to see me posting some pictures. We will be having our spring event at the end of April. Hope you guys can join me for that. Um, and I love you guys. Enjoy the nice weather. I hope the weather is nice where you are. Stay safe and sane, and I will talk to you guys soon.